me open my view so I can see a little better. And let's get going. All right. My computer never stays on. All right, turning on my watch. Good. All right, hopefully everybody has. Oh, and always remember to remove your cleat covers or you won't get on your bike. And while I have these in my hands, for those of you that have uh, look pedals or even if you have speed play, um, you can actually purchase these little rubber cleat covers, which are a really good thing to have if you are going on a club ride or if you're on a, um, a tour or if you find yourself getting on and off your bike a lot and having to walk. Putting these cleat covers on saves your cleats. And those of you that are wearing the plastic kind of cleat, they don't last very long. It really aren't made of a very durable material. So by having a cleat cover, it definitely saves those cleats and has them last a little bit longer. If you haven't changed your cleats in an extremely long time and they're looking very thin, there might be parts broken off. The one thing that happens to most people is the actual screw. The screw starts to um, lose its head or the shape. So what ends up happening is you can't get the cleat off because you can't put a Phillips head screwdriver into the head of the bolt. So it's always a good idea to check your cleats on a regular basis and make sure you're not wearing them down or you're not, or they're not those bolts are not wearing out. You can replace the bolts at any time, even if the cleat itself is actually still looking pretty usable. If at any point you have any broken pieces on that cleat, or they start to look really thin, especially near the front or the back of the cleat, time to change them. Another indicator is, if you're using a look cleat, what will end up happening is in the upward part of your stroke, you might feel a little bit of play in the cleat, meaning as you pull your foot up, you might feel that the cleat's not stable, that it's kind of pulling up just a tad bit. It's another indicator that it's time to get some new cleats. So. Some cleats have float, some don't. If you're riding speed play, which looks like a lollipop, those have 100% float. If you're riding a look pedal or a Shimano pedal, uh, those have, depending on which cleat you have, will give you different ranges of float. What's float? Float is just giving your foot a little bit of wiggle room. So if you're locked in there and your foot can't move at all, not necessarily the best thing, but you have to make sure that your cleat is in the proper position if you have that type of cleat. So I use the red cleat for my look pedals, which gives me maximum float. They have red, they have black, and they have gray. Uh, Shimano has yellow and gray, I believe, and I'm not sure exactly which one has the most float out of those. So, if you have an SPD pedal, which is the little tiny one, you're not going to get very much float out of that at all. So, those have probably the least amount of float in them. So, just a few things to think about. When it comes to those cleats, and it's also, hold on one second, I forgot to plug in my fan. All right, which I'm definitely going to need tonight. Um, depending on the type of cleat and shoe you have, 
it's your own personal preference. So that's okay. Uh, I will just make one little, little observation to consider. If you're using an SPD pedal, which has a little tiny cleat that's about the size of a, a quarter, think about power transfer. When you push power into a little cleat, you're only going to get a little bit of power transfer. If you're putting power into almost the palm of your hand, which is the shape of a Shimano or a look cleat, you're getting that much more power transfer into the pedal. So something to just consider when you're, if you're purchasing new cleats or new pedals, the Shimano Time might be a good option. Speed plays are good just because they give you that ultimate float. So think about what works best for you. And if you're happy with what you have already, then stick with it if it's working for you. All right, tonight. So give me a raise of hands for those of you that took advantage over the weekend and got in at least maybe Sunday and Monday worth of riding. Raise your hands. All right, good. Good. So as a result of that, today we normally do some cadence work, but we're going to do some cadence work on top of also doing some kind of short efforts. I want you to think about tonight's workout as a chance to do a little bit of recovery from a weekend of good riding. But these efforts are all going to be short, maybe high intensity for some. And we just want to get a little bit of snap back in the legs. So I'm looking for you to think about effort level of being at like 80%. Don't want you going all out unless you did nothing and you feel like you have super fresh legs. Then you can go for it on a couple of these efforts. But for the most part, I want you to just feel the snap, feel your legs come around, and use this as a chance to kind of do a little different workout than what we normally do. All right. So here's how this is going to get started. We're going to do five 15 second cadence efforts to 120 RPMs. So I want you to go high intensity, quick, 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 quick legs. I'm going to give you a gear. It's going to be pretty easy. But if you want to go to a little harder gear, which sometimes we have to do to get to those cadences, then go ahead and go there. So you're currently in your small ring. Go ahead and shift down to your 23. So if you're 28 at the top, 25 is next, 23 is next. We're going to go 15 seconds, 120 cadence, 3, 2, 1. Bring it up. If you feel yourself bouncing, pull that belly button in, get yourself over top of the pedals, and if you need a higher, harder gear, then go there. Three, two, one. Bring it down to 80. 80 to 90. I'm sitting at 90. We're going to go high cadence. We're going to do five minutes of this. And then we'll get rocking and rolling. Just want to get you breathing a little heavy. Tonight, you're probably going to sweat a lot more than you normally do because it's so much warmer outside. So make sure you're drinking along the way. Find that gear. Three, two, one. 120. 120. Holding on to it. 15 seconds worth. Three, two, one. 
nice and easy. Just shift up one gear if you want. Holding that 90. Feel the legs coming back to life or getting some life. You've been sitting around all day, working at a computer. One thing to consider at home, which you probably never imagined, is thinking about the position of your computer. If you sit at it all day, and the type of seat that you're sitting in. Find that gear. Three, two, 120. Hold that nice high cadence. Three, two, one. So if you're typically at work, sitting at a desk, and your ergonomics have your screen right at eye level, then everything is in place. If you now work from home, and you're sitting with a laptop on your lap on the couch, hmm, not so good on your back, not so good on your legs. So find maybe a better position to put your gear and your computer. Find that gear. Three, two, one, bringing it up. I love it. Everybody's got fast legs. Three, two, one. One more of these to do. And also think about the seat that you're sitting in. If it's not like allowing you to sit up straight, or it's got too, it's too soft or too hard. You have to be like uh, Little Red Riding Hood. All right, here we go. Last one. One twenty three, two, one. All those good positions. Get those abs working. Three, two, one. Easiest gear. Hold on to this. Two minutes. All right, here's how the first one's going to go. We're going to do a five minute effort where you're going to do 10 seconds seated, 10 seconds standing. The gear I'm going to give you is going to give you enough resistance for when you stand to have enough underneath your feet. When you sit back down, I want you to try to hold 80 to 85 cadence. When you're standing, I just want you to work on the standing portion of your pedal stroke. So everybody struggles with standing. Today, really find it in that 10 seconds. That comfortable place, hips are over the ankles, a little bit of the saddle feel between your legs, hands will be in the hoods, straight up with your body position, even looking at the ceiling if you need to, to find that proper placement. Working all this stuff here, hopefully that will transition when you get out on the road. Of course, the only element we don't have here is being able to feel the rise of the road and what that does. All right, so find your big ring, your 13. So remember the 13. We have three gears underneath 
our chain. We're doing this for five minutes. Three, two, one. Staying seated. And again, that cadence I gave you was incorrect while you're seated. We're talking between 60 and 70. Three, two, one. Stand it up. I got some kind of squeak going on here. Sitting back down. In your hood. Stand it up. Sitting back down. Ten seconds up. Ten seconds down. Three, two, one. Stand it up. Sitting down. Turn up your fan if you need it. Stand it up. Sitting down. Concentrate on that pedal stroke when you're seated. Stand it up. Sit down. When you're standing, try not to let those feet drop to the bottom. Stand it up. Sitting down. Stand it up. Sitting down. Remember, tall, tall from your waist. Stand it up. Sitting down. Find that a groove now. Three minutes in. Stand it up. Sitting down. Try to keep those hips really still. Using all legs when you stand up. Stand it up. Sitting down. If you're in the right gear, you'll have enough resistance. Remember, we're in the big ring. Stand it up. Feel strong. Sitting down. Up to the fourth minute. Last minute to go. And up. Sit down. Notice when I stand up, how all you see are my knees coming up. And up. Hips aren't moving outside of this. Nice and still. Sitting down. And up. Down. 
Last 10 seconds. Three, two, one, small ring. Eat your gear. Take a drink. Two minutes easy. Like I said, you're going to sweat a lot more just because of the actual temperature in the air. And especially you guys that are outside, too. There's not much of a breeze out there, but it's nice, actually, to be outside. All right, here's how the next one's going to go. We're going to go right back to where we started. So you're going to do five, 15 seconds at 120 cadence. So we kind of beat the legs up a little bit by standing. Now we're going to spin them out, bring some life back into them. So then we can go into another effort that's going to kind of waste them a little. And we're going to, the last three sets are going to kind of, waste you out to the end. But remember, in terms of effort level, we're talking to 80% effort, and we're going at about, you're probably at zone three, top of, bottom of zone four for these standing efforts. Don't go any harder than that. This is also about controlling your effort, understanding how to read the body, and go by feel for a lot of this night. All right, just like before, we're gonna go small ring, 23 or 21, whichever gear works best for you. We're gonna do 15 seconds at 120. Three, two, one, go for it. Get the cadence up. Feel yourself change position so you can get to that cadence. Three, two, one, bring it down, 80 to 90. You can go up one easier gear if you wish to. In between, you just want to keep it relaxed. We want the 120 cadence to be what is working us out in this segment. Ten seconds. So we get to the second one. Find that gear if you've shifted. Three, two, one. Let's go. Right up to it. Fast legs, fast legs, fast legs. Three, two, one. Bring it down. Nice and easy. So we got outside on Saturday or, yeah, Sunday. Saturday was kind of a washout. Kind of a bummer to have one day during that holiday weekend where we didn't get to enjoy the outside. So Saturday, we just did everything indoors. But Sunday, we got out for some gravel miles, which was nice. Shifting down to that gear. Here we go. Three, two, one. We're right back to 120. Feel your feet being light. Three, two, one. Talk to yourself during those through. Two. I always tell myself, come on. Fast legs, fast legs, fast legs. When you think about it, most of the time it happens. If you feel like, ah, my legs are so sluggish, 
but they'll come back. This is the kind of workout that makes them happen. Coming up on three minutes. Ten seconds till the next one. Find that gear if you've shifted. Three, two, one. Here we go. Fast legs. Three, two, one. Nice and easy. We got one more to go. Take a drink. There seemed to be a lot of people out on Sunday, but it was good. I think we only saw maybe a group of four. So people were pretty much keeping the uh, groups to a, a small amount, which was good. I don't think any bike clubs have yet started doing workouts together yet. Last one. Three, two, one. Right to 120. Come on. Three, two, one. Easy gear. Spin it out. Two minutes easy. Take a drink. So I think even though you're allowed to have 25 people outdoors, I'm not sure that the bike clubs are yet prepared for how to actually do a group ride. So I think they're just waiting for another phase to happen and then we'll get back out there again. So one observation that Randy and I made, which was really kind of cool to see is that most people on like a trail or anywhere on gravel that we passed, people that were walking, let's say, as soon as they saw us or heard us, they put their mask up on their face. And then once we pass them, take it back down again. So it was nice to see that people were really observing those rules on the trails that we had been on. So that was a good, a good thing to see. All right, so our next five minute effort, and these are all five minute efforts, so nothing longer than five minutes tonight. The next one you're gonna do a 45 second effort. We're gonna do five of these. With 30 seconds in between, I'm going to give you a gear that I want you to get in, and for that 45 seconds, I want you to be kind of in the upper part of zone three. Again, about 80% of effort, not totally all out, just enough to keep the legs spinning. And if you can hold between 80 to 90 cadence, that's what we want. So get to your big ring. Down to your 21. So again, remember, that's probably two or three gears down from your largest cog in the back. 45 seconds, moderate pace. Three, two, one. Cadence, 80 to 90. No higher, just enough to give you a little bit of effort. I'm at 89 if you're following my legs. You're going to get 30 seconds in between each of these. Settle in. Allow yourself to feel that you're at a comfortable pace. Three. Two, one, just to your small ring. 
30 seconds easy. Holding the cadence at 90 though. We want to spin out the legs. Keep the effort at a nice easy level. Tonight's all about control. Not feeling like you have to push so hard. Back to that big ring. Three, two, one, 45 seconds, 80 to 90. Dial it in. Should get right back to it. I know this isn't the most exciting workout, but it's a good one to do after maybe a hard weekend with a lot of miles. This is just enough to get the legs to work again. Three, two, one, down to that small ring. Two down, three to go. Think about those body positions. I know I drill this stuff into your heads because I want you to hear me in your head when you're outside. Find that big ring. Three. Two, one, number three. Same effort level, 80 to 90 cadence. Get right back to it. If you're using heart rate, the heart rate's not going to drop too much in 30 seconds. So you should be able to keep this pretty. A pr pretty good level playing field. And if you worked really hard in the last couple days, three, two, down to that small ring, and your body's tired or hungover, Kristen, <laughs> then that heart rate might not get up. Because the body's telling you, uh-uh, not today. That's why a workout like this is good. Because you're not requiring the heart rate to get up super high. Back to that big ring. Three, two, one. Number four. Dial it right in. Took me maybe about three pedal strokes and I got to right where I wanted to be. Start to feel as you go through these workouts certain effort levels and certain cadences and certain gears. Start to get in tuned, attuned to it all. Three, two, one, down to that small ring. One more to go. You should feel yourself getting right to 90 when we get to this small ring, too. That's the other thing. You all are getting very proficient at holding that good cadence. All right, here we go. Last one. Big ring. Three, two, one. Right to it. That's it. Looking good. Everybody's looking really relaxed and comfortable. 
A little bend in those elbows. 15 more seconds. Three, two, one. Small ring, easy skier. Two minutes easy. Who's almost halfway through their bottle? If you haven't turned up your fan, I think you might want to do that. All right, so before we did 10 seconds seated, 10 seconds standing. Now we're going to push the envelope just a little bit. We're going to go 15 seconds seated and 15 seconds standing. And again, for five minutes. This time, you're actually going to go to one easier gear. So what does that mean? Not as much resistance under your feet. The legs have to work a little bit harder. But when you sit back down, you're going to be able to hold maybe a little different cadence than you did in the 15. So instead of being your 15, you're going to be in your 17. So that's either going to be one or two gears easier, depending on your gear ratio. And you're going to be in your big ring. Don't go there yet. Allow yourself to spin this out for another 30 seconds. And then we're going to get there. Another five-minute effort, 15 up. 15 down. Really work when you're standing. Work on whatever you feel is your weakness right now when we stand. And remember, use that core when you're standing up. All right, so find the big ring. Shift it down either to the 15 and then shifting up one or knowing exactly where that 17 is. So we're going to do start seated, 15 seconds seated, three, two, one. Maybe a little higher cadence this time. You might have 60 to 75. On your hoods, stand it up. Find the bounce in this when you stand. Feel yourself dancing on the pedals. Three, two, sit back down. Just let the pedals come around. Don't work extra hard. Three, two, stand it up. Legs might want to drop on this. Don't let it happen. Sitting back down. One minute to go. One minute done. Four to go. In your hoods, stand it up. Make sure your chest isn't too far over your handlebars. Three, two, sitting down. Come up this way, not this way. Three, two, one, stand it up. Don't go too far forward. Make sure you're tall. There you go, Mariana. Three, two, sitting down. Two down. Three to go. Holding that cadence steady. 
in between. Three, two, stand it up. Good. Everybody's looking strong. Three, two, sit down. Light on your feet. In your hoods. And up. Heads are up. Three, two, one. Three minutes down. Two more to go. And up. And down. Feel yourself getting into a nice rhythm here. I know exactly where my legs are going to go as soon as I sit down. Three. Two, stand it up. And this time I want you to sit down gently. Don't plop yourself back into the saddle. Build some leg strength. Three, two, sitting down. Good. Then the legs will start going again into the last minute. Three, two, Stand it up. Only two more. Two more times to stand. And sitting down gently. Three, two, sitting down. One more standing. Three, two, one. Last time out of the saddle. For this effort, that is. Three, two, one. Small ring. Easy gear. Take a drink. Towel off. Woo, it's a sweaty. It's a sweaty one. If you find yourself uh, having your hands be super sweaty inside, don't hesitate to wear your gloves so your body gets used to having those gloves on. I know gloves can be a little warm, but it also helps with the sweating won't make your hands so slippery. Also, I know I talked about uh, bar tape. When you get new bar tape, make sure you're feeling the bar tape before you put it on. Don't get a bar tape that's really slippery. There's some really kind of shiny bar tapes. They look cool. But when it comes to the warmer part of the season, that tape can be really slippery when it starts to get wet or damp. So I like to use a cork tape, something that has cork in it. That's going to also absorb a little bit of that sweat. Whereas some of these new like synthetic materials they're not the greatest because of that, because they're, they're not a natural material. And also pay attention to the wear of your bar tape. That's going to tell you where you put your hands a lot of the time. But I will tell you for me, on this particular bike, I use it on the trainer all the time, and I rarely have to change my bar tape. Why is that? 
because I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my hands. So I'm sitting up properly, taking that pressure off my hands, which doesn't wear my bar tape in a certain place. So once you get good at your positioning, then everything else falls into place. All right, one last effort. Here's how it goes. If you're feeling good, then you can go all out on these. If you feel like you want to spin these, then that's your decision. If you feel like you want to do half and half, I'm going to give everybody that option. So there are five 30 second efforts. They're going to be sprint type efforts if you choose to do them that way. So here's the three options. The first option is you do the 30 second effort at a super high cadence, 110 or higher. Second option is you do 15 seconds in the saddle, 15 seconds out of the saddle. And the third option is you do each one like a 30 second sprint, all out, as hard as you can go, going for the line. Here's the deal though, you're only getting 30 seconds in between each of these. So I'll give you 15, 15 for those that wanna do in and out. You get to choose whatever gear you want to accomplish whatever you decide to do. So go ahead and find your gear. I like giving you this option. See what kind of freedom you do. 30 seconds, either high cadence, 15, 15, or 30 seconds all out. Here we go, three, two, one, 30 seconds. I'll give you the 15 second mark. 10 seconds in. And 15 seconds in. Holding it. Three, two, one. Small ring, easy gear. 30 seconds easy. I'm gonna do a little bit of everything. That one I did 15, 15. This next one I'm gonna do high cadence. Mix it up on yourself or stick with the same. All right, find that gear. Three, two, one, 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds in. Going for it, going for it. Come on, Chris. Three, two, one. Back to that small ring. Thirty seconds down. All right, Glenn, come on. You got to get in the mix now. Chris is going for the sprint. I think you're going to match him. I'll be looking at the wattages. All right, three more to go. This one I'm gonna go all out for 30 seconds. Big ring, three, two, one, go for it. Come on, you only have three more minutes to go in the workout. Last 15 seconds. 10. Three, two, one. Woo, nice and easy. Two more to go. Don't go easy on yourself. Work these last two. All right, 10 seconds to go. 
Find that big ring or whatever gear you're in. Three, two, one, 30 seconds. Fifteen to go. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Mariana. There you go, Leslie. Three, two, one. Nice. Saw a few of you doing the 15-15. We got one more to do. Make it the best one. I'm going to go 15-15 myself. All right. Find that gear. Last one. Three, two, one. Here we go. Going for the lead up. What do you have left? 15 seconds to go. 10. Last five. Come on. Three, two, sitting down. Woo! Spinning it out. Nice, easy gear. Towel off. Finish up what's in your bottle. Woo! That was a, that was a sweater. So I'm going to tell you guys a story that pertains to not so much anymore, but this is the reason why in those first two months we were staying inside. So Randy and I went gravel riding in Gardner yesterday. It was a beautiful day. I don't know if any of you have been up to that part of New York, but there's now a new gravel trail that goes up to Mohonk Reservation. And if you've never been to Mohonk Reservation, it is really a beautiful place to ride. On the roads and on the trails, if you have a gravel bike or mountain bike. So we're cruising along this really nice flat section. Randy's in front of me. And I kind of see this soft part coming up. So you kind of ride through a soft section a little differently than you ride through other parts. All of a sudden, the next thing I know, it felt like somebody took my back wheel and lifted it up off the ground and threw it to the right. So after, of course, that happened, I'm on the ground. He looks back. He's like, what? What happened? I'm like, I don't even know. So what happened was... When you're riding gravel, sometimes there are roots that get worn down in the middle, and there's just a little nub of a root sticking out. Well, this is actually a pretty thick nub of a piece of wood sticking out. And when I went through that soft section, I kind of bounced into it. It hit my, that little nub, hit my back wheel, and just threw my back wheel out from under me. So little road rash on the elbow, little road rash on the knee, everything else is fine, bike's okay. But that's the kind of incident that we were talking about during that time when the last place you wanted to go to was the hospital. So there's a good example of it's really nothing I would have done differently. I think it was just one of those things that kind of happened in a weird way. Um, fortunately, I'm okay. Fortunately, the bike's okay. So for the rest of the ride, of course, I got to ride with, like, blood running down my arm and my knee. People were looking at me as they were passing by, like, oh, my God, did you see that girl's leg? <laughs> so lots of dirt in that 
little cut, still digging out some dirt from it, but I'm okay, all is good. Nobody was hurt badly, so that was my little, and I have to admit, Randy said to me, he's like, I can't even remember the last time you crashed or that you hit the ground. So it's been a long time. So I'll definitely want to make another long time between this one and the next one. All right, keep spinning out your legs. The other thing I'm happy to announce is that our last two organizations that were receiving the care packages, they have gotten them. The New Jersey Fireman's Home, they were so happy to get them. I'll be posting up the pictures this week. And then um, those of you that know Janelle, she works at the uh, St. Barnabas Medical Center in the Oncology Department. She's an RN. She delivered her packages and sent some really awesome pictures. So again, I thank everybody for participating in our Care Package with Love uh, fundraiser. All of those healthcare workers that received those packages, they couldn't say enough thank yous for having something to put in their pocket while they move from patient to patient. And that seemed to be a common thread among all four of the groups that we sent to, that they just don't have time to eat. So to be able to stick a cliff bar in their pocket and, and some lotion and a pen, it really made a difference. So thank you guys again for your amazing support. And that was really, really a fun way to get us through all of this. So let me open up the phone lines and again a great workout by everybody Woo! turn my fan off good job